Michelle Obama gave a fantastic speech on race at Tuskegee University. Let's listen to a portion of it. The road ahead is not going to be easy. It never is, especially for folks like you and me. Because while we've come so far, the truth is that those age-old problems are stubborn. And they haven't fully gone away. So there will be times, just like for those airmen, when you feel like folks look right past you. Or they see just a fraction of who you really are. The world won't always see you in those caps and gowns. They won't know how hard you worked and how much you sacrificed to make it to this day. The countless hours you spent studying to get this diploma. The multiple jobs you worked to pay for school. The times you had to drive home and take care of your grandma. The evenings you gave up to volunteer at a food bank or organize a campus fundraiser. They don't know that part of you. Instead, they will make assumptions about who they think you are based on their limited notion of the world. And my husband and I know how frustrating that experience can be. We both felt the sting of those daily slights throughout our entire lives. The folks who crossed the street in fear of their safety. The clerks who kept a close eye on us in all those department stores. The people at formal events who assumed we were the help. And those who have questioned our intelligence, our honesty, even our love of this country. And I know that these little indignities are obviously nothing compared to what folks across the country are dealing with every single day. Those nagging worries that you're going to get stopped or pulled over for absolutely no reason. The fear that your job application will be overlooked because of the way your name sounds. The agony of sending your kids to schools that may no longer be separate but are far from equal. The realization that no matter how far you rise in life, how hard you work to be a good person, a good parent, a good citizen, for some folks, it will never be enough. And all of that is going to be a heavy burden to carry. It can feel isolating. It can make you feel like your life somehow doesn't matter that you're like the invisible man that Tuskegee grad Ralph Ellison wrote about all those years ago. And as we've seen over the past few years, those feelings are real. They're rooted in decades of structural challenges that have made too many folks feel frustrated and invisible. And those feelings are playing out in communities like Baltimore and Ferguson and so many others across this country. But graduates, Today, I want to be very clear that those feelings are not an excuse to just throw up our hands and give up. Not an excuse. They are not an excuse to lose hope. Yeah, I love everything about that speech. Because it wasn't even just, so she gave all of the facts about, uh, you know, racism and she, ex she can explain in great detail that she understands exactly what it's like to grow up being black in America. But then she even ended it with a message that conservatives should love, right? The message at the end was her saying, even with all the, the, the horrible circumstances and the facts of reality and the history we're dealing with here in America, essentially, you can still do it, right? It's not an excuse. You can find a way. You're, you're smart enough. You're strong enough. You're bright enough. You're brilliant enough. You work hard enough. You got this. You can do it. So you would think conservatives would be like, oh, at least she ended it exactly how we wanted her to end it. Yes, yes. Nope, of course not. I think it was a raw story. They had an article earlier today, conservatives on Twitter, just going balls to the wall, fucking bonkers, going crazy. I love how any time a black person in America acknowledges the fact that race exists and that they have personal stories of racism in their own lives, they get called racist. <laughs> if you discuss racism in any way that doesn't agree with the conservative take that reverse racism is worse, you're a racist. If you even say race as a liberal, you're racist. They try to flip it. This has been their argument forever. They do it with gay marriage, right? If you support gay marriage, you're the bigot for not accepting uh, me being a bigot. They flip the history on its head. They flip the reality on its head. And here's the thing, man. And this is the point we've been trying to make for the longest time on Secular Talk. 
there are just flat out empirical facts about racism that you can't override because your opinion is different. So for example, and she alluded to it there, the resume study. So uh, if you have all the same work information and one name sounds white and one name sounds black, the white name gets 50% more callbacks. That's outside of like, oh, just by random chance. That's outside of that realm. In other words, what that means is, subconsciously or not, people who hire go, eh, I trust the white name more than the black name, so I'll give this person the job, even though the, the work uh, experience is exactly the same. There's no other way to explain that other than race. If you try to deny that race is involved in that, you're an idiot. I want to be kind to you, I want to be nice to you, but you're just shoving your head directly up your anus. And I can't, I can't help you if you're just, if you look at something like that and go, no, I don't see race as an issue here. Okay, then go, you know, suck Rush Limbaugh's dick a little more and see, see where that gets you in life. Uh, another example, disparity in the enforcement of drug laws. So, uh, studies have shown that black people and white people use drugs at a very similar rate, but black people get arrested four times more often for using drugs. Again, race is the only way to explain that. How about selling drugs? White people sell more drugs in America. Black people get arrested more for selling drugs. No other way to explain that. One community is policed much more than the other community. Uh, another great example, the online sales study. When you have the same product, same price, one black hand holding the product, one white hand holding the product, which one gets picked more? The white hand, of course. And it, there was even the YouTube car study where a white guy tried to like break into his own car, nobody cared, everybody walked by, police even drove by, didn't care. When his black friend tried to do it, immediately the cop showed up, put him in cuffs, and they were rough with him. This is the problem. There, racism does still exist, whether or not people want to acknowledge it. I mean, imagine... It, let me try to sum it up as quickly as I can here, because I'm running out of time, I can hear the countdown in my ear, but... If you make it and you're successful and you're a black person, what happens oftentimes in the white community? We know, we've heard it a trillion times. Ah, affirmative action is the only reason he made it. We heard about Obama, they said that about Obama. Ah, affirmative action is the only reason. That's why the black person's successful. Always affirmative action. But if a black person doesn't make it, they go, Ah, typical. You know how they are. They're just are lazy, they don't work hard, they're part of that gangsta culture, so... So wait a second. If they make it, you hold it against them and say, just affirmative action. If they don't make it, you hold it against them and say, Ah, typical. Thug. What's going on here? So, it's a... It's a lose-lose for them. So maybe you should get your understanding of the situation in perspective and realize that you have a bias against black people if that's the way you think.